Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. And welcome to the FIDM Virtual Spring Open House. I am Nick Berrios. We are Dave Wall. We're the co-chairs of the fashion <laughs> design department. I'm David Hall. Correct. We're the co-chairs of the fashion design, theater, costume design, and film and TV costume design departments right here at FIDM. And uh, we're so happy to be here. Here you can see some photos of our, uh, one of our lines that we have, uh, Nikolaiki, which means little Nick in Greek. And we've dressed a lot of red carpet celebrities uh, here for the Oscars. We have Debbie Matinopoulos at the Academy Awards. We've also dressed um, Katy Perry, Heidi Klum, Beyonce, and Carrie Underwood, <laughs> just to name a few. And you see some of our gowns here from our high-end line that we have had since 2001. My goodness. Yes, <laughs> a while now. A while now. We also have, a, um, I would say, what a sportswear line for QVC UK, QVC Italy, as well for home shopping networks. So we both, we do both the high and the low. <laughs> yes. And so today for this exclusive workshop for this year's virtual open house, we will first do a brief introduction into discovering color trends and the colors of 2021. I say colors, because this year there's two. Ooh, yes. And then <laughs> following this brief overview on color trends, then I will do a very, very special, did I say very? <laughs> a very special sketching workshop where I will give a lesson on how to draw the nine head fashion crow key and take you step by step on creating your very own fashion crow key. I will also teach you how to draw a face. And if we have some time, maybe some creative hair ideas. And speaking of having time, I think we'll definitely get to do a fashion look, maybe a gown using the croquis that I will teach you how to make and then coloring it with the colors of 2021. Okay. See, see how we tie it all in? Yes. <laughs> so make sure you have your drawing paper. Uh-huh. You want to have uh, pencils. Okay. You want to have a ruler. Uh-huh. Okay. And maybe some color markers or colored pencils. Uh, did you say erasers too? Uh, eraser. You need, yes. you might need <laughs> you erasers might need an eraser for and, your first time. Yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> I guess I'm kind of going to give away, but you should have some color markers or color pencils in like gray and yellow. Oh, sorry. Okay. 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 <laughs> but first let's talk about color and how certain colors become trends. So as we know, color plays a role in every aspect of our lives. We constantly communicate via the medium of color. Color has the power to influence our mood. So like today. Exhibit A, <laughs> take a look at us. <laughs> we are in a certain mood. What what mood do you think this is? Um, colorful. Like, okay. Um, bright. Bright. Um, happy. Cheerful. Cheerful, yeah. Excited to be here? Yes. Yes. And okay. um, pink. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we like the color pink. <laughs> so, yeah, so color is so essential to the creative industries that we actually teach a course in color and design theory as part of our general studies curriculum. So whether you study fashion design, merchandise, product development, graphic design, or business management, everyone must know color right here at FIDM. Yep. Color trends show up in textiles first. Premier vision or Premier Vision, <laughs> the international trade show for fabrics and textiles is attended by fashion professionals from all over the world. You see some photos right here. Talk a little bit about Premier, Premier Vision. They, they have them across the world. So they have them, it started in Paris. You'll see it in places like Turkey, New yeah. York, mm -hmm. uh, London, everywhere. And uh, if you ever get the opportunity to go in your career, it is Amazing. It is a color explosion yeah. and it is so exciting and just a stimulus everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's a trade show to let interior designers, architects, artists, fashion designers, you know, fabric developers know what the trends will be, the color trends, the fabric trends that will be for the next season to come. And so when you go there, it really is like you're on the cusp of like, what is going to be hot next? Yeah. Um, and so this is really important. And if you ever get to go, 
um, if you know we ever get back to normal, we could travel and we can go to Paris soon. It, yes, <laughs> soon. And if you guys get to go, make sure to dress really chicly, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Now, then after Premier Vision or Premier Vision, the fashion industry also influences all other creative industries. Color trends show up in interiors, tiles, carpets, cosmetics home appliances, yes, even home appliances, <laughs> cell phones, cell phone covers, automotive, like what color cars you want, you know, for the next year. The list goes on and on, on how colors and the trends of colors influence everything. So every year, Pantone, which I hope you're all familiar with, <coughs> chooses a color of the year. The Pantone color of the year selection process requires thoughtful consideration and trend analysis. Very nice, thoughtful consideration. Yes, very thoughtful <laughs> to arrive at the selection each year. Pantone color experts at Pantone Color Institute. Ooh, very fancy. Yes, comb the world looking for new color influences. This can include art collections, new artists, fashion, our environment, popular travel destinations, as well as socioeconomic conditions. Ooh, that's a lot, yes. that's very fancy. Yes. <laughs> Influences may also stem from new technologies, materials, uh, textures, and effects that impact color. So if there's a new dye process, if there's new technology in creating colors, that influences the Pantone Institute. Relevant social media, of course, and even upcoming sporting events that capture the world's attention. So here you can see some of the things that potentially could have inspired the Pantone Institute. So in the upper left, yes, we have in the upper left, you have artwork. This is from Johannes Girardoni. And you see that bright yellow right there. And then you also, it's influenced by travel. Those gorgeous, gorgeous, colorful doors. They're from Mexico City. Beautiful. Right there. Yeah. And then you have the environmental image over there, that's rocks with moss growing on it. And then in the center, that beautiful architectural, modern architectural building. And then on the next slide, um, you'll see some others that influence. You see technology in the middle and um, some beautiful cityscapes from none other than New York City. And then yeah. the right. And then in the right, you have this artwork right at the bottom, bottom right, and it's from Jahoy. Kusama, why do you always give me the, the international <laughs> name? I was like, and on the right. I know. We say yes, that. I will say. But look at the colors. And this is how it moves. It's almost like a mood board, guys, of how we can pick out the colors and how possibly, I mean, we're just guessing here, um, how possibly the Pantone Color Institute, the secret group of executives, um, come up with what the colors of the year will be for 2021. And so we buried the lead and we <laughs> can now tell you, obviously, the Pantone color of the year is ultimate gray and Pantone illuminating yellow. Yes, which yeah. is like a highlighter yellow. Now, here are those colors. Illuminating, that's the yellow. And then ultimate gray, that's the gray. <laughs> now, why gray and bright yellow, you might ask? Well, Laurie Pressman, the vice president of the color Institute, the Pantone Color Institute, says of the two contrasting colors, it's a combination that speaks to the resilience, the optimism, and hope and positivity that we need as we reset, renew, reimagine, and reinvent right now. This is the first time, now I'm going to give you a little bit of inside dish. This is the first time, did you know this, David? The first time that the gray shade has been selected. I didn't, I didn't know. And it's only the second <laughs> time that two colors have been chosen. Yeah, and so they have two intending effects, these colors. The first one is what? The first one is tranquilizing. These two extremely independent colors highlight how different elements come together to express a message of strength and hopefulness. These hues capture the spirit of the time. In years, like in years with undercurrents of uncertainty, such as 2020's global pandemic, that has often meant choosing colors that are meant to soothe, calm, and uplift, which 
Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, psychological, according to Pantone, illuminating the bright yellow is associated with optimism and vivacity, while ultimate gray encourages feelings of composure, steadiness, and resilience. Oh, just, just calm, you know, yeah. composure, composed. But then the yellow is like, hey! Yeah, it's <laughs> cheer and happiness. The bright highlighter yellow color is the light at the end of the tunnel, the sun rising over a dark landscape, the dawning of hope after all that we have been through. Think about it, guys. I mean, you know, you think about the bright yellow, the sun. Uh, when you think of the sun, when I think of the sun, I have memories of like being at the beach in Mykonos and like I was really happy. And so that sun, the sun, the yellow, the color is happiness. And while now the gray is a little bit more calming. Yeah. yeah. Uh, together, the combination, now this is really interesting. Think about this, guys. The combination to us looked a lot like Maurizio Catalan's viral sculpture of a banana stuck on a wall with duct tape. <laughs> yep, right there. This is actual artwork, guys. And this is titled Comedian. This debuted at Art Basel Miami Beach in 2019. That's December 2019. So Pantone most likely was influenced by this. I'm thinking that the Pantone Color Institute secret executives might, might have been in Miami Beach at yes. Art Basel, yes, right? I'm sure they were, yes. <laughs> the total <laughs> contrast between the two colors can be thought of absurd, kind of absurd, kind of crazy, right? But we actually have seen it in fashion in fashion. So here are some examples now how we have seen, look at that, look at that guys, how we've seen these two supposedly absurd colors that made it into being the colors of 2021. We've seen this in fashion. All right, do you wanna go through the list? Right. Yeah, so the first one is off-white and that's from spring 2021. And if you know about fashion, that's the season, although it's spring 2021, it was shown in fall of 2020. Correct. Yeah. The next look that you see right here with that brown harness, but you see the bright highlighter yellow, the gray pants, that is from a Spanish brand called Loeve. And that is from fall 2021. So that's very recent. Yes. Yeah. And then the next one is off-white again. And that is actually from fall 2020. 19. Ooh. So as we said in the beginning, yeah. fashion is one of the main influencers of color trends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So think about that, that off-white look, the checkered, the gray, and the yellow, that's from almost two years before the Pantone Color Institute decided that the, these two colors were the colors of the year. The next look, kind of in the middle almost with the earrings, that's from Prada. And guess what, guys? That is from spring 2016. Yep. Prada has always been in the forefront of trends, uh, color trends, and often what's interesting is like the artwork called absurd, sometimes Prada pushes those boundaries into sort of absurd color combinations. And then of course, then it becomes the norm. It becomes really what everybody should be doing. The next one next to that, that is Prada, but from now, that is Prada spring 2021. Yep, and the final is Tom Brown, fall 2021. So that's the latest that you see right here. And that is actually skier, Olympic skier, yeah. Lindsey Vaughn, who modeled in his latest uh, uh, virtual fashion show, runway show presentation, wearing uh, that yellow color, that goldenrod yellow color as a puffer ball gown with a tuxedo suit underneath. Yep. Yep. So, so guys, there you have it. That is just a brief look into color trends and how trends are created and how color plays a very key role in that development. Yep. Yeah, for sure. All right, we're gonna take a short, a little short break, maybe 30 seconds to a minute to get my camera set up for the sketching seminar, the sketching workshop. So make sure to what, David? Get your pencils, your ruler, your eraser, as Nick said. Uh, paper. <laughs> paper. And paper. You can have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. That's fine. It's okay. And I will write back and you will know how to draw your very own nine head fashion croquis from teacher Nick. Okay. We'll be right, right. back. Bye guys.
All right, I'm back. <laughs> okay, guys, are you guys ready for the sketching workshop? I am. <laughs> I'm so excited to do this. Uh, I can't believe this is actually my first time doing this for open house. And um, it's so great because I also used to teach this class. So I'm very excited about this. You have a sketch cam right here that shows the sketch. And so hopefully I can give you some time. Oh, there it is. Nice. All right. You can have, uh, you know, grab your piece of paper. Now I have one that is 11 by 17. It's a little long, but you can have your eight and a half by 11, which is kind of the basic shape, like, like a copy paper. And that's fine. And those are the measurements I will give you in terms of drawing your fashion croquis. You'll also need a ruler, pencil. I have several and they're sharpened. Okay. Just make sure of that. And then an eraser. Here's your eraser. You can see the eraser. Here's the pencil right there. Okay. All right. And then the piece of paper. All right. So I'm going to show you how to draw a croquis. And what is a croquis? A croquis is a French word for drawing, <laughs> for drawing. And let me show you what that looks like so you guys can see. Take a look. See, that's a croquis. That is a nine head croquis right there. And that's what I'm going to show you how to draw. And the nine head, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, each head represents a certain section of the body. And the whole theory goes that basically the body is evenly distributed. And so that's why in each head lands in a certain place of the body. And this is for fashion sketching, all right? And you can use this for fashion illustrations. You can also use this for technical flat sketching. Now, what is technical flat sketching? That is like that. Like when you draw a flat sketch and it looks, think of, you know, when you look at magazines or you go on the internet and you see some garments that are laying on a table flat or on a hanger, that's what that looks like. So think of like that. Here it is on the figure, but then when you draw it as a flat sketch, it ends up looking like that. Let's see, let me show you another way. Let me, let's, I'm gonna show you from my menswear book right here that we have. And then here's the book. As you can see, and I'm showing you how we can use the croquis to draw the flat sketches. So here's a menswear croquis. All right, see, that's the menswear version. And then these are flat sketches. Do you see that right there? So take a look at this. These are all hoodies, knit tops. These are flat sketches. So that's the difference between a fashion sketch and a flat sketch. Okay. All right. So let's put this away and let's start sketching. Okay, guys. Let's go, let's be ready. Okay, first things first, you wanna draw a straight line right down the center of your paper, okay? So let's figure out what the center is. I'm gonna measure just to be precise. And I'm gonna take, try and take my time because I know that uh, some people might think that I might go too fast. So I might go a little bit slow for you guys to give you time to then hopefully you guys do the drawing, okay? So halfway between here is right there, okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna draw a line, a straight line, just like that, okay? You can see that? Oh yeah, you can see that, okay. And now you're gonna divide this into nine heads, okay? Now each head is going to be one inch, one inch for you guys, okay? So one inches. And now I'm gonna start a little bit below the top and that's gonna be my beginning right there. So I'm gonna erase this so you guys don't get confused. So when you draw your line, Right at the top, start with just drawing one line. And then now go down one inch and then mark it again, okay? That's your first head right there, okay? And then now, so that's one. Then one inch below that is two. Then one inch below that is three. And then keep going. Four, one inch, five one inch, six, seven, eight, nine. And then see how we had an additional line there? So do an additional line below the nine, all right? The nine head croquis is actually 10 heads <laughs> for fashion, for the fashion sketch, all right? But then when you do those technical flats that I showed you, you will use an actual nine head, okay? Now for this fashion illustration, you'll notice that this croquis has really long legs, but you know, just stay tuned. All right, now that you've done your one drawing, and so you've numbered it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you can maybe do a 10 at the bottom right there, okay? All right, 
Are you guys ready? All right. Okay. Let's start. Right at the top, you're going to draw a head. Now, the shape of the head will kind of look like the shape of an egg. So kind of like an oval. So draw a shape like that on one side and that on the other, just like that. So it's kind of like an oval, like an egg shape, all right? So that is your first head right there, number one. Now, while you're at it, I want you to draw horizontal lines on each of these lines, okay? This is gonna help you as well. So take your ruler, just like that, and lightly just draw a line like that. Do that at number one, do that at number two, do that at number three, four, make sure it's even, five, okay, six, seven, eight, and nine, okay? And then if you want to the final one, the 10, that's gonna be the floor. <laughs> all right, now that you've done that, all right, let's do it. We've done the head. So number one, you can write number one, and write chin. So the one equals chin. Got it? And once again, each head, each head equals one inch. All right. Now we got to do a neck and the shoulder, but where is it? Where do we do it? Do we do the neck all the way down here? No, that's too long. Or how, how do we know? What do we do? All right. I'm going to give you the next measurement. Between one and two, you're going to mark one and a half. So one and a half is right there. One and a half, draw another light line. Like that. So between one and two, mark it and draw a line. Okay, that one and a half is your shoulder. So write down shoulder line. Okay, now how wide, how wide is your shoulder? The width of your shoulder is one and a half heads, all right? So what is that? Well, if your head is one inch, then your shoulders are one and a half inches, okay? So measure one and a half inches right here, right here. So what is half of one and a half? That is three quarters. So one side, mark three quarters out, all right? And then the other side, mark three quarters out. That is your shoulder width right there. That is what your shoulder is, okay? So now that you have that, we're gonna do the neck and the shoulder. So watch, halfway down right here, you're gonna do a shape right there on the head, just like that. You're gonna go there and just stop halfway. And then do the same thing for the other side and stop. It kind of has a little curve. What do you think that is, guys? That's the neck, okay? Notice again, it's only halfway between one and one and a half. And then now take your ruler and connect. Go connect and connect. I'm going to erase this here. Okay. That's a little better. Okay. There you are. All right. And so right there, that's your shoulder. Again, it looks kind of like a hanger. So just go drop it just halfway between one and one and a half, and then go out. Remember, this width is one and a half inches, all right? Now we're gonna draw the torso. So let's go to number two. What's number two? That is the bust, okay? You can skip that. Let's go to number three. What is number three? Number three is your waist, right there, okay? That is what number three. Let's go to the waist. How wide is your waist? Well. The width of your waist for a balanced supermodel <laughs> is the same as your head, <laughs> all right? So what is the width of and length of your head? Let's see, let's measure this again. That was one inch. So go to number three and measure one inch. So it'll be half an inch on one side and mark, half an inch on the other and mark like that. Total one inch. That is the same as your head. And now guess what guys, you're gonna connect shoulder to the waist. Take your ruler and go boom and boom. All right, I'm gonna move the numbers here so you don't get 
too confused right there. Okay. I moved two here, three here, because I'll need it. Maybe I'll move four as well. And five. Okay. We got five right there. All right. We've got the waist. Okay. Are you guys keeping up? All right. Now you just did the torso. That is your torso. Once again, this is the same width as your head. All right. Let's go back to number two, the bust. Now you're going to do two smiley faces for the bottom of the bust. Okay. Where do we do it? Watch. Pay attention. Go right below number two. This is the line for number two. Go right below it and go like this. Watch. And scene. Do the same thing for the other side and scene. All right. This point, number two, is the highest point of the bust. We call that the apex. The apex is the highest point of the bust. All right. So imagine if you were wearing a bra, this would be the highest point right here. And this is where the ampere. Think of Bridgerton and those dresses, those empire dresses, and they stop right here under the bust, okay? So that is your torso, all right. We're good. We've done the shoulder, bust, waist. Now time for the hips. Number four, hips. Write down hips. How wide are the hips? The same width as your shoulder. And what was that? That was one and a half inches. So go to number four and measure a total of one and a half inches. So you can go three quarters on one side and mark, go three quarters on the other side and mark. I know it takes a little bit of math, <laughs> but you'll be so happy when you like see the results, all right? Okay, so that is the width of your hips. Now here's a cheat sheet, guys, watch. In case you forget how wide your hips, the same width as your shoulders. So you could do this, just draw a line straight down. Oh, hi, matches, see, there and there. Do the same thing here, boom, same width. See, easy peasy. Okay, now you're gonna draw the shape of your hips. It's a slight curved shape. Now you can freehand this or you can use your ruler. I'm gonna do both methods, watch. I'm gonna freehand it from here. You're gonna connect to here with a slight curve like that. See, okay, now you can use your ruler and just manipulate it so it kind of curve, 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 bam. <laughs> so those are two methods of doing it, all right? Guess what, guys? You've done the hips, okay? Now, see this right here? This is number four. You want to go to four and a quarter. So drop it down just a quarter of an inch, just a little bit, and mark. I'm going to draw a line here, okay? And that is four and a quarter. And you're wondering, what is that? That is your crotch. So write down crotch four and a quarter, all right? That's your crotch. That is where the legs are gonna come from. They're not gonna come from up here. They're gonna come from there, just a little bit below the hips, okay? All right, so now let's go to number six. I'm gonna move the number here, number six. What is number six? Knees. Number five is thigh, by the way, okay? Number five, thigh. Number six, knees. Okay, so let's go to the knees, all right? Now we gotta draw the knees. How do we draw the knees? You wanna go a little bit away from your center axis line. This is your center axis line. You don't wanna draw the knees right here, right here, okay? Otherwise, the croquis will be like knocking knees and too close together. You want a little bit apart, not too far apart, all right? Just a little bit, okay, so watch. So a little bit of ways from your center axis right here, draw a circle. So I'm gonna show you right now, I'm gonna draw a circle, a small circle, just like that, okay? Just like that. That circle is a little bit, it's like three eighths of an inch if you're using your ruler, if you're keeping score. But notice it's a little bit away from the center. Draw another circle on the other side right there, okay? All right, those are your two knees, okay? Again, create a little bit of space right there, just a little bit of space. And now you're gonna connect. You're gonna draw the top leg, the top leg. So watch, from the hips, go, bam. <laughs> and then the inner leg from the crotch, which is four and a quarter, draw the inner leg, bam. Do the same thing for the other side, all right? So from the out, go in to the circle, and then from the crotch, go in right there to the knee. 
So there you have it. That is the top leg, right? Okay, pretty cool. Okay, so now let's continue. We need to do the rest of the legs and they're gonna be a little bit long. So just so you know, again, once again, we're assuming that this croquis, this fashion croquis, she's like five foot 11, six feet, <laughs> really long, all right? Number seven, let's move number seven right there. And those are your caps, all right? Number seven, number eight, right there. What is number eight? That is your lower leg, all right? And then finally, number nine, what could number nine be? Your ankles. So write down ankles. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, how do we know where the ankles will be? How do we know how, where to draw? What, what do we do? Okay. Here's a trick. I'm going to show you a trick. Take your ruler, go to the middle of the circle, the middle of the circle, draw a straight line that hits number nine, the number nine line right there. Okay, and then you're gonna draw a smaller circle right here, just like that. Notice how this circle is smaller than this one, just by a little bit, okay? Because the leg gets smaller to the ankle, all right? And then notice again, it's a ways from the center axis. Do the same thing for the other side. Bring this down straight, just bring it down straight like that, okay? And then do a smaller circle, just like that. Okay, now we gotta draw the leg. Now, this can be a little tricky for you guys, all right? I'm just giving you that warning, but you wanna draw a shape that kind of looks like this, kind of looks like a bat. <laughs> because the calves are bigger here, and then it goes smaller here. Do you see that? I'm gonna freehand it. So it's a little bit, you've got the calves there, you know? And then take your ruler and then go straight into your ankle, just like that, okay? So here I did a little bit slight curve right in this section between six and seven, and then you go straight in. So I'm gonna do it with the ruler. Go out, notice what I'm doing with my ruler. I'm, I'm moving it, moving it. So it goes a little bit of a curve and then bam. Do the same thing for this outer, go out, 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 and bam. Okay, once again, the shape, think of the shape as slightly like a bat, like a baseball bat, okay? A little baseball bat. <laughs> so it's a little thicker here, but then leaner down here, all right? Let me erase the baseball bat, okay? Okay, look at that. We're almost there, guys. Okay, what's missing? The feet. <laughs> so here you can be a little more creative and I'm gonna draw the feet. Now she's gonna be kind of standing on, she's wearing high heels, like five inch heels. Um, so this is how I draw feet. So watch, go here like that. And then I do a point, another point, and then like that. Kind of looks like the bottom of a tie, <laughs> of a men's tie right there. Do the same thing for the other side. Go here and then here. The point will point to number 10. Number 10 is the floor, right there, okay? Okay, so you did your feet right there. And then I'm gonna do front part of the shoe, just because I want to. Right there, there she is. All right, okay guys, our croquis, she needs hands, she needs arms. How do we draw them? All right, let's go back. Go back to the waist, number three. Go to number three, all right? That is also your elbow. Number three is not just the waist, but it's your elbow. So now what you wanna do is go a little bit of ways from here, a little bit of ways from here, and you're gonna draw what? A circle, a small circle, just like that, right at number three. Do the same thing here. Go a ways, just a little bit of ways right there and draw a small circle. Okay, that's your elbow, all right? Now we have to connect. Let's do the top part of the arm. Let's do the outer part. From the shoulder, go out to your elbow. So draw a straight line, bam. Now, where do I draw the inner arm? Okay, some students, make the mistake of like going all the way up here. 
and then they do the arm and then watch. That would be like a super skinny, like weird arm. So what you wanna do is, do you see where the bottom of the bust is right here? Mark it, mark it right there. So this level right here, go boom, that's it. That's your armpit and then go boom. See, that's how you draw the top part of the arm. So let's do the other side, shoulder outside. Now the armpit, underarm level, same as the bust right there, here, and then go here. Okay, now we're missing this part of the arm and the hands, all right? So let's go to the wrist. Where's the wrist? Number four. So it's not just the hips, it's also slash the wrist, just like that, all right? So at number four, what do you think you guys are gonna do? You're gonna draw a little circle, just a little circle right here, all right? So go away from the hip, just a little bit of waist, and draw a smaller circle, just like that. Okay, do the same thing on this side, a smaller circle. Nice. And now you're gonna connect. Go from your elbow to the wrist, elbow to the wrist. The other side, elbow to the wrist, elbow to the wrist. Look at that. It's not rocket science, guys. <laughs> you can create your very own croquis that you can use to draw fashion illustrations, fashion sketching, flat sketching, all of that, okay? Now the hands. So the hands are gonna look kind of long because they're gonna go from number four to number five. That's gonna be the tip of your fingers. So think of your hand like this. See how long this is kind of, this is kind of long. <laughs> That's a long arm, okay? So how do we draw it? So, you know, sometimes they end up kind of looking like claws, but try not to do that. So this is what I do. I'm gonna show you. I draw my hand and I do this. I go out and then I come in like that, all right? So it's kind of out, in, all right? And then I go out again like that. And then I go here and there and here. That's a thumb, that's the forefinger, okay? And then if you want, you can draw like the, arm, the little other fingers from underneath. See, there's your hand, you just drew your hand, <laughs> all right? Now, if you wanna be creative, you can draw this one like this. She's gonna be a lady. She's doing kind of like little, you know, she's holding her hand kind of like, oh, like that. <laughs> That's the other hand right there, all right? Um, so you, you can practice with hands. You know, what I like to say sometimes when you're practicing with hands, here, here's a bigger version. Pretend this is the wrist right there. And then you're drawing the hand, go out, in, like that. And then go out and then just think of the thumb and then the fingers, you know, some, something like that. Just practice, it takes a lot of practice. All right, guess what guys, that is your nine head crow key. You did it, you guys did it. Isn't that great? Amazing. All right, so now let's do the face. Are you guys ready to go do a face? Okay, let's do a face. Let's do a face. I'm gonna make it bigger, okay? How to draw a face. Okay, let me get a cleaner piece of paper, hide this one in here. All right, this is really important and really cool. All right, middle, get a clean piece of paper. You have this. Now you're gonna draw, go to the middle and draw a three inch line, three inches. So that's three inches. That's one, two, and three. Go to the middle of those three inches and mark it. And then do a two inch line right there, okay? So three inches long, two inch width. This is your face. Okay, and then now fill it in. Draw an oval. You're going one side, go another, go here, and then go here. Okay, again, like the shape of an egg, kind of like an egg. Okay. All right, there is your face. I hope you guys did it. Three inches, two inches. All right, now you can draw the middle, draw a line, 
right in the middle and then draw this line right in the middle. Okay, right here in the middle is where the eyes are gonna go, right in the middle. <laughs> okay, but where? So break this in half, break this in half, find the midpoint of this area, mark it. Same thing for the other side, find the midpoint and you can draw a line like that and draw a line like that. All right, now we're gonna draw the eyes. What's the shape? It's the shape of an eye. <laughs> All right, so watch. It'll cover just from a little bit here and then a little bit here. So I'm gonna draw it. Here's one and that's the other. You're gonna go a curve on top and a curve at the bottom. Go a ways, a little bit of ways like that and go curve, curve, just like that. Right in the middle, your eyeballs. Okay, just like that. Now she needs eyebrows. Go up, go up about this much. See, from here, go up just a little bit. And then you're gonna draw a shape of a hockey, uh, hockey stick. So it's like this. Okay, so go thick and then down, thin. Like that right above it, right above it. Do the same thing for the other side. Thick and try to make it symmetrical, but I understand sometimes that it can look a little not symmetrical. <laughs> All right, and you can fix that later, okay? So that's your eyebrow right there. Okay, we've done the eyes and the eyebrow. Now, if you want, you can add eyelashes. And so what I add, little pestañas, Spanish, little flicks right there, okay? There she is. She's got mascara on. All right, nose, where's the nose? Where does the nose go? It's in between this and this. This is the eyes, this is the chin. So mark halfway. Let's find the halfway point and it's right here. You can draw lightly a line like that to help you, okay? Your nose is gonna go on top over that line, not on it, but over it. And watch, this is the shape. It's gonna do this kind of shape. You're gonna go like this, this, this down and like that. So that's kind of your shape. This is the front of your nose, okay? And these are your nostrils. So watch, it'll look like this. You go in, up, down, and then up again. Just like that. And do it above, do it above this line like that. Just that shape, okay? Once again, it's up, down, up, and then up again. So this is the shape, the hockey stick. This is your eyebrow and that's your nose right there. So what you want now to give a little bit of the shape of the nose, you can come in like this and draw a line to give a little bit of that ridge, that shape. See, just shaping the nose. Okay, next up, the mouth. Divide this and this in half and mark it. Draw a line just like that. Above this, you're gonna draw your mouth, not on it, but above it, okay? And so what I like to do is right around here, I draw the actual center of the mouth and then the lips. The lips will go a shape of a lip, go up and then here, and you can make them plump, which is what I'm doing. And there she is. And you can make her smile if you want. Okay, like that. All right, so the shape again, you're gonna do straight line. You're gonna go up, down, like that, like a lip, all right? And that's your mouth. You can shade it a little bit and then the bottom will be just curved, not with the two mountains, okay? It'll just go like that, okay? That's your mouth shape that you'll do right there. And this ends up being the chin. You see that, the chin? Okay, we're almost done, ears. The ears take up this space right here where the eyes are, same space where the eyes. So see right here where the eyes are, that's gonna be the middle of your ear. So go out just a little bit. You don't wanna make her look like Spock from Star Trek. Just go out and out, all right? Like that, all right? And now give the oval a little bit of shape. This is how you do it. So come in, give her a little bit of cheekbone and then straighten out the oval and then jawline. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm using the oval as an outer shape to then shape the rest of her face. 
okay? Just shape the rest of her face. And then I add an eyelid right there. And there you go, all right? Now she's missing the hairline. The hairline is between this and this right in the middle. So go right around that area. And that's where your hairline is. So I'm gonna do a simple hair, watch. So I'm gonna start there and she's got her hair pulled back. And then you can fill that in, but fill in more. Go above the oval, go above the oval. So it fills it in and you can erase here and then fill it in so you don't see that oval. But I'm gonna give her a bun. I'm gonna give her a big bun right there. So there is the top and then the bun. You guys can do whatever you want. I can't wait to see. Make sure to post your sketches and what you guys did and hashtag FIDM FIDM sketch. FIDM sketch. Okay. All right. So we got that. We shape her out a little bit. And that is your face, guys. That is your face. Now, if you want, you can add like a fall. You can make it a little fancy, just like that. And then the neck. Where's the neck? See these two lines? That's your neck. So come here, come here. There she is. If you want, you can add some earrings too. I'm adding some earrings, some big earrings. I like big earrings, just like that, okay? That's your face. Those are the steps to do your face. There's your lip, nose, and the eyelash, okay? So now we've done a croquis and you've done the face. Now let's use your croquis to draw a fashion look, okay? To draw a fashion look. Okay, quickly, this is what I like to do. I like to take my Sharpie, which I have right here, and you guys can do that. Go over your croquis, so then you can see it, because if you lay a piece of paper on top of it, you can see it more. Here, you can barely see it, you barely see it, but once I go over it with a Sharpie, then you can really see it, so watch. Take your Sharpie and then just go over the lines that you drew. Like that, that, I'm doing the fingers here, here, here. Do the under part of your arm, shoulder, neck, neck, shoulder. Do the rest of the other arm. I'm using the ruler to guide me, that will help me. See, like that, go out. I'm doing the hand. Now do your torso, torso. Don't forget your head. And I know I'm going a little fast here, but you guys can do it on your own time right there. And then now the hips, curve around, curve around. All right. The legs, 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 legs. Okay. Now the bottom part of the legs. Go around, remember the baseball bat shape? And then the feet. And then the other leg using the ruler, using the ruler, okay. All right. And then what I like to do is with a broken line, I like to mark the waist. So you know where the waist is. Then I like to mark the hips right there and then I like to mark the bust if you want right there a little curve a little curve right there and then you can move you can mark, do your little face here using the guide rules that I um you know did for you okay so now let's do a gown let's do a fashion sketch are you guys ready okay watch look at this trick look at this trick so here's your croquis that you made right here it is and you take your piece of paper and you see your croquis underneath, see? Now this is, see, see how you see it? Now, if you have tracing paper, it's even better. Watch, here's tracing paper. Hello, <laughs> look at that. So if you use tracing paper and you have your croquis, then you can have a balanced drawing. So imagine with your tracing paper or just any paper and you use your croquis as a paper doll, you slide her underneath. So anytime you wanna draw, a fashion drawing, a garment, a dress, a top, you're gonna get the right proportion. So this time you'll always have a dress that hits at the knee. Why? Because you know where the knee is, okay? So if I wanted to do, let's see, if I wanted to do a skirt that ends at the knee, watch, and I'm using this tracing paper. 
I go out, out, I do a waist, waistband. I know I'm gonna do this very quickly. I'm not trying to show off here. And then I'm gonna go here, 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 here. And then, you know, like if my designer boss says, Nick, I need a full skirt that ends at the knee. And then I say, you mean like that? <laughs> See, I did it. And how do I, how did I get the waist size right? How did I get the length right? Crokey magic. See, that's why it's important to have your crokey. All right, let's do a gown. Let's do a quick gown using the crokey. Now I'm gonna use this white piece of paper. Let's use the crokey. So I'm gonna do, let's see, I feel like doing a one shoulder gown. So how do I know it's one shoulder? I'm gonna draw one shoulder goes right up to the shoulder. You can kind of see the crokey underneath. And then here's the shoulder, then it comes down here. So then I do the waist. See, I'm just following the croquis. This time you don't have to freehand it. And then I can even do the outline of my fashion girl. See, she's got the hands. And then here's the hand. And then you know what? I can do her hand here where she's like holding it. Hi. Okay. Right there. How do I know what the length of this? It's the same length as this, guys. See? So just measure this measurement out, measure this measurement in, and boom, you got the arm, all right? Then I'm gonna draw the face, the head right there. Okay, good. Now, the rest of the gown, let's do a waist seam. How do I know where the waist is? Well, the croquis telling me. So I know it's gonna go right where it should, right there. That's a waist seam. And then I'm gonna do a little drape right there. And now I'm gonna attach the skirt, the ball gown skirt. I wanna do kind of a mermaid fit and flare shape. So watch, how do I know where it goes? It goes from here to the hip and then out. See, you see the leg? You see how it went a little bit away from it? It wasn't tight, tight, tight. So do that again, go out and out. Amazing, okay, the bottom. How do I do the bottom? All you have to do is do slight waves, go down, up like that. Just do waves, see? And then see where the waves are? Go like this. Oh my God, it flutters, it flutters. Now, I wanna add more drapes. See the drapes here? These are pleats, I'm gonna do that here. Nice, all right? And then just quickly, I'm gonna like do my face. She's got her eyes, she's looking away. And this, I'm taking the same lesson I just showed you where I put the eyes right in the middle. Okay, and then the nose, and then the lips right there. And she's just fabulous. And then I'm gonna give her big hair. I'm gonna give her like Mariah Carey hair because I love that. See? Fabulous, amazing. Okay, great, all right. Now let's color it, see? But look, the whole point is I used my croquis. I used the croquis that I just showed you how to do, the whole nine head croquis. And guess what guys? I just drew that drawing using the croquis. So the next time somebody's like, oh, I'd love to see a drawing, a fashion drawing from you uh, with a gown. Cheat, use that, put it under there. And then you can go, you know, when your boss or your mom or your dad, oh, can I see that drawing? Oh yeah, sure, it's right there. <laughs> Nobody needs to know. All right, let's finish this off guys. I'm gonna use the colors of 2021 to finish it off. I'm gonna do the top in gray, okay. All right, this is the ultimate gray right there. I like that. And then of course, the illuminating yellow. Oh my goodness, look at her. You know what, I feel inspired. I'm gonna give her a cape, just a cape right there, like that, just a cape. And then I'm gonna give her some skin. How about we give her some skin? Oh, yes. 
Amazing. Yes, we're coming. We're doing it. We're doing it, guys. You guys are doing it. Oh, there she is with her skin, a little bit of skin. All right, let's do this yellow also because that'll make it fabulous. She is giving you Pantone colors of 2021. Fabulous, okay? And then let's just give her a little bit of the hair. I think we're good. Okay, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Love it, love it. Okay, and you can outline it. Sometimes I like outlining it. It adds kind of a punch. You know, it just adds a finishing punch. So I like to do the outside, maybe one section of the outside, you know, just kind of outlining so she stands out right there. And then sign it and then hashtag FIDM sketch. And I will choose my favorite sketch that you guys do. And you'll win a book, a sketching book from me. All right. So remember to post your social on social for a chance to win my book, Nick's book. And submissions are due by March 28th. Hashtag Fitum Sketch. And then, of course, follow us at Fitum College, at Fitum, and follow me at Nick Ferrios. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Here is the gown with the colors of 2021. Here is my croquis. There they are amazing all right hope you guys enjoyed it it was my honor to give you guys my nick Ferrio sketching workshop seminar right here at the virtual spring open house the fit of virtual spring open house okay guys stay for the admission session and q a with christian moraldi Mwah. bye guys <laughs>